Hey there, gang. A common question that you might have is, you know, I've got a box of old comics sitting around and I wonder if they're worth anything. And, you know, usually the answer is no, I'm, although they might be worth a couple dollars. A uh, little known fact about myself, I uh, have a passion for comic books and I've spent about 20 years collecting comics, investing in comics, flipping comic books, selling them on eBay. So it's one of those kind of passive streams of income that I've kind of grown to love over the years. So in this video, I'm going to walk through, are your comics worth anything? And if they are, how do you get maximum value for those comics? Let's go. All right, how's it going everyone? In this episode, I'm gonna cover off if your comics are actually worthless pieces of paper or if they're actually money, big gobs of money in disguise. So here's some common questions that you may have. How do I determine the value of that stack of old comic books that you've got? Maybe you've inherited a box from someone you know, God forbid, maybe a family member passed away and you've got an old box of comic books. A lot of times it'll be a situation where you're cleaning house and you find an old box and you're like, man, is this garbage or is this worth anything? It can be tough to tell, right? Especially if you don't read comics all the time. And if they are worth anything, how do you actually go about selling them? So that's a common question that you run into if you actually think, man, maybe this stuff is worth something. So we'll go over that as well. And how do you get the most money? One of the worst feelings in the world is when you sell something on eBay and you know you sell it for like 50 bucks and you think, man, I got 50 bucks. And then it turns out, oh man, I could have got like $800 for this. Oh man. So we'll go through that as well. I want to make sure that you guys get the most value for your money if you've got a stack of old comic books. So the first thing I want to cover off here is the value and how value is determined for comic books. So when we talk about value, there's really a few key factors here that come into play. The first one is the age of the comic. The older the comic, generally speaking, the more valuable and the more rare it is. Back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, comic books were very disposable forms of entertainment. Think of like a newspaper, for example, right? If you had to go find a 1950s newspaper, it would be pretty hard to find that. Now, nowadays with eBay, you can find one, but it may be expensive. So age plays a, con a, a role in the value of your comics. Another one is the condition of the comics. If it's in great condition, hardly any wear on it, it's not well worn, then it could be worth more than if it's a beat up old rag. The demand plays a large role as well in the value of a comic book. So things like Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, these are common, popular genres of movies and television shows and, and books, and they're well known all over the world, and so they play a factor in the, in the value as well. So the first age of the comic that we're going to cover off here is the golden age and this is from 1934 to 1955 so here's just an example of kind of a golden age comic book and again when we talk about golden age and then there's silver age and there's bronze age there's different ages it's kind of fuzzy so like don't get too hung up on the dates but this is just generally speaking if you've got a bunch of old 10 cent comics laying around chances are very good they're worth something valuable so the age the golden age, if you've got a 1930s or a 1950s comic book, you know, your eyes should be perking up going, hey, it's going to be worth at least a couple dollars anyway. Now, if you're wondering how to determine the age of the book, okay, you want to look down at the bottom of the first page of the comic book. So here's just an example of a Batman and Robin comic book. You open it up, the very first page down at the bottom, there is a little bunch of text there and it says you know Batman number 121 and it's February 1959 so if it's 1950s maybe 1960s 1940s those are probably going to be worth at least some money you don't want to just throw them in the garbage okay if they're 1980s or later then it, things get sketchy and only very specific issues are worth any real money the rest are worth pennies or a couple bucks Silver Age comics are normally about 12 cents. And again, don't get too hung up on the, the ages and, and the price ranges. These are just common because DC did come out with 25 cent jumbo sizes and Marvel jumped up to 15 cents and back down to 12. And you know, there's 20 cent comics, but the Silver Age generally runs from 1956 to 1971. And so if you have a bunch of 12 cent comics, 
uh, you know, those are probably going to be worth some money as well. The Bronze Age of comics runs from 1972 to 1985, and you can tell a Bronze Age comic not only by its age, but usually by the price range as well. It'd be 20, 25 cent comic book, maybe a 30, 35 cent comic book. So there's a few really valuable Bronze Age comics. Maybe, you know, if you're a middle-aged person like myself, I mean, I'm in my 40s at the time of this recording, this is one where I grew up reading these comics. And so in my mind, you know, you think, well, these aren't really worth that much, but man, you'd be surprised. Like that comic book there, Amazing Spider-Man 129, I just recently sold a copy of that comic for 2,800 US dollars. Now it's a CGC, it's a slabbed copy, but it was also signed by Stan Lee and John Romita, who are the artist and the writer on Amazing Spider-Man. And so, you know, it's a high grade, verified certified copy so anyway there's way more information about how to get the most value out of the books but for a bronze age comic book you may have a copy of this even a raggedy old version of this might be worth a couple hundred dollars the copper age runs from 1986 to 1992 and this is ones where these are just starting to kind of become valuable certain issues are so here's just an example amazing spider-man 252 it's the first appearance of spider-man in the black suit and so this one a really high-end copy that's certified and slabbed you know meaning it's been put in plastic and graded would fetch between 100 and 300 dollars depending on the grade so again copper age comics they're generally not worth a lot of money but key issues are like first appearances deaths marriages you know key storylines and if it's in high grade a combination of that can can render some value now, the modern age is ones where 99.9% .9 .9 of the comics in the modern age are not worth anything. So they're, you know, you buy them for five bucks or four bucks, and you'll be lucky if you ever get five dollars or four dollars for that book. But there are certain individual issues that are worth a lot of money. So you really have to know what you're looking for. So if you sell a big lot of comics, really savvy people like maybe myself would pick through those comic books and go okay i want this one i don't want that one i want this one i don't want that one and so like this one detective comics 880 for example i recently sold a, again it was a slabbed version a cgc copy of it but it was about 800 dollars that i sold this for now this was you know a cgc 98 which is a really high-end copy and it was slabbed uh, this is by an artist called jock and he's amazing so this is a really in-demand cover that uh, you know I bought it in an auction and then I turned around and I flipped it at a fixed price so typically a modern age book they're not worth very much but you get the occasional key issue that can be worth something now next up we'll talk here about the condition of the book now this is all subject so when I talk about the condition there is no one single authority on the condition of a comic book but typically it falls into three ranges high high end mid range and then low end so a high end book a high grade book would be one that looks essentially brand new it's not all beat up it doesn't have a bunch of crinkles along the spine it's not doesn't have any rips or tears it's a complete full copy so that is the highest you know value you know regardless of age mid-grade books are kind of in the middle so you know they might have some wear like this is an example you can see here over on the spine there's a couple little dings along the spine this would be something where it's like if you use a percentage system like 100 percent is full and zero percent is complete garbage this would be like 50 percent 60 percent so there's this, there's this company called cgc and they grade books so this would be like a cgc like a six or a 6.5 uh, you know and again it's all relative because if it's a really in-demand book even lower grades are still valuable a low grade book would be a, just a beat up copy what they call a reader copy so here's an example and this is a pretty in-demand book this is an early issue of the flash and even though it's in low grade it would still be worth some money it might be worth 30 bucks 40 bucks depending on the the in-demandness of the issue but a low grade copy here you can see there's some fraying along the edges and you know as long as it's a complete copy though if it's a 10 cent issue or a 12 cent issue it'll probably be worth something so if you have a box of old comic books and they're 10 cent copies and 12 cent copies do not just throw them in the garbage or give them away to the salvation army you can probably sell them for at least something on ebay or you can go into a comic book store and get some value for it next up we'll talk about the demand 
um, it, it makes me laugh because there's there's a wide range of publishers and almost everybody knows about DC Comics and Marvel Comics. And so those are the two that are most in demand. So how do you know which ones you've got? So again, if you've inherited a bunch of comics or if you're not a comic book person, DC Comics are basically Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman. And you can read at the bottom, it'll have the little... Uh, indica of the publisher. Marvel comics are things like Spider-Man, the Avengers, Fantastic Four, X-Men. And so again, the demand is pretty high for those books because, you know, the Marvel movies have sparked a lot of interest in the underlying comic book properties. There's other publishers as well. There's Dark Horse, there's Gold Key, there's Charlton, uh, Archie Comics. A lot of these books are not really worth a whole lot. But again, they could be worth something depending on the age of the book. So if you've got one of these others, don't just automatically throw it out, but just be aware there could be a huge range in value. If you've got old EC comics, that's like really valuable. It's from the 1950s. Those are the old horror comics, like Vault of Horror, you know, that sort of thing. But if you've got like old Archie comics, a lot of people do. They're so common that even an old Archie comic might be worth five bucks, six bucks. So, you know, it's not super valuable. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself, how can I get the most money for my comic books? Let's say you do have some old comics. They're in relatively good condition and you've got a few key issues in there. One of the things you can do is you can go to CGC Comics and that's a website, cgccomics.com. And you can get your comics slabbed or, you know, basically they're stuck in plastic and they wind up, uh, you know, you can't open the slab and you can't read the comic, but you basically get it in crystallized. So here's an example of that amazing Spider-Man 129. So on the left here, we've got just a raw copy of the comic book. And then this is a CGC universal grade in the middle. So this is a 2.5. This one would go for a few hundred dollars. You can't open this slab. So you send this comic book away to this company. They grade it. They protect it in this slab. And then they send it back to you. The one on the right is the one that I was talking about. It's a eight. So it's like 80% of perfect. This other one is 25% of perfect. You can see the difference in the grade. So here we've got you know, some fraying on the 2.5s. See that's beat up corner here on a 2.5. Whereas my eight was in pretty good condition. There's, looks almost brand new. And so this would be considered, you know, pretty high end for this age of a comic book. It was also signed by Stan Lee. There's Stan Lee's signature in the middle. And then it was also signed by John Romita. You can see it here on the leg. And John Romita was the, the cover artist. So the one on the right went for $2,800 US. And again, the reason it went for that is because it's got two signatures on it that are verified by the CGC signature series. And this one in the middle would go for a couple hundred dollars because it was at least graded and protected in the slab. So you've got a few options here if you're going to sell your comic books. On the left-hand side, we've got an option that says sell the, sell the entire lot. And what that means is it's the least amount of work and you know it, you probably won't get a lot of money. In the middle, you could sell bundles of comics, and on the right, you can sell single books. So I'll go through you know, the differences between these three. So the first one is, if you're gonna sell your entire lot, you'd wanna to go to a company like probably Nucadia.com and MyComicShop.com. I use both of these on a regular basis. I do recommend both of them. I think they're great. They're not paying me to say that. I'm just a loyal customer. I very much like the customer service, and I think they both provide great value. When you sell your entire lot, you're saving time, you're saving effort and you're really, you're not going to get the most money, but the, you have to value your time at something as well, right? So mycomicshop.com is a great example. They'll buy entire lots of comics. Nucadia will do that as well. They'll take your comics and then you basically consign with them on the website. So you can get quotes and you can reach out to either company and ask them what you'd like, you know, what they'd like to do. The most time and effort, but the most return would be selling single issues. So let's say you've got a couple hundred old comic books. You can list them individually on eBay. And if you're wondering, well, how much are they really worth? Take really good pictures, put them on eBay, list them for 99 cents plus shipping each, and just let the auction run. So if they end, they could be 80 bucks each when they sell. They could be 60 bucks. They might be 99 cents. You could also list lots of 10. So if you've got 10 Batman comics, 10 Superman comics, maybe 10 gold key comics, list them all as a group, and then you could list them again in auction if you want. If you absolutely don't want to part for it for less than a certain amount of money, then just list it as fixed price, 
You can also do best offer as well. So there's a bunch of different options on eBay. If you don't want to pay fees on eBay, because eBay will charge you about 11 or 12%, another option is Facebook Marketplace. And you can just list on Facebook Marketplace for free, and then somebody can just come to your house and just pay you cash for your comics as well. So that's an option. Facebook Marketplace is very popular if you're selling bundles of books or if you're selling single issues or even entire collections. The middle piece here, the selling of the bundles, this is where you can really get burned if you don't know what you're doing. And so you got to be aware. If you list on Facebook Marketplace an entire lot of comics and they're old, you will get sharks coming out of the woodwork and they're going to want to pick through your issues. So I've done this myself. I've listed 300 Fantastic Four issues, early issues, middle age issues, and then re recent issues, all as one big lot just to get rid of them. And I've had m lots of people reach out to me saying, can I just take the early ones? Can I just take the most expensive ones? It's like, no, I'm selling them all as a lot. So just be aware that people are really going to just want your key issues and they're just going to want the old issues because those are the ones that are in, in the demand the most. So just be aware of pickers if you're going to list on, on eBay and Facebook Marketplace. Now I've got a channel that I've just set up. I'm happy to announce. Exciting, shameless self-promotion here. I've got a sister channel that I've set up called Weeb's Warehouse where I'm going to talk in way more detail about investing in comics, key comics, are my comics worth anything, how to get your comics CGC'd, and just lots of fun, mindless entertainment like, you know, watching creator spotlights or watching, you know, um, just fun comic book related videos. So if you like what you saw today, uh, I'm, I, you know, the, the Zen Water Cooler channel is primarily for Redbubble and Tee Public and graphic design. So if you liked what you saw today, feel free to subscribe to my, you know, you can always subscribe to Zen Water Cooler. I'm happy to have you. That'd be wonderful. But if you're interested in comic book related artwork and comic book related investing, and if you have questions, feel free to subscribe to Weeb's Warehouse. And I, I'm going to be doing lots of videos that are more comic book related in that regard, especially, you know, investing and, you know, seeing if, you know, things are worth money, which is, you know, I, I think a really fun hobby to get into. And it's been one that's been very satisfying and rewarding for me over the years. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Again, if you like what you saw today, hit that like button. Feel free to leave me a comment and a question. And I hope you found value uh, regarding these, these uh, comic book questions that you might have because if you're sitting on old comic books, you might be sitting on some potential money. And that's an exciting thing to have happen. So anyway, take care guys. Thank you so much for watching.